So I was really happy to have the opportunity to read and review this month's journal article looking at the 30-year experience of conjoined twin separation coming out of the group from Toronto, Canada. And this group offers their experience looking at surgical separation of eight sets of conjoined twins. The distribution of those patients were four ischiopagus, three omphalopagus, and one craniopagus. And that's consistent with uh, the distribution of conjoined twinning, with craniopagus being the least common. I was surprised they didn't uh, mention or see any cases of thoracopagus, which are the most common. Uh, but the authors really limit their experience to their surgical separation. So one thing I was curious and continue to be curious about is had that group a seen or consulted on any other types of conjoined twins that could not be surgically separated. Nevertheless, they offer their experience with uh, eight sets of twins. And conjoined twinning has been an important and interesting concept and topic talked about in plastic surgery since the beginning of our specialty. A few places have the opportunity to be involved in such cases because they're so rare. But I think the principles that they offer are really relevant to much of what we do in plastic surgery. And I commend the authors for sharing that and trying to make sense and organize and streamline some of the critical parts of a topic and a condition that can be quite variable. They offer seven lessons that they learn. One is the importance of tissue expansion, two, preoperative planning, three, secondary healing, four, modern day imaging, five, optimizing nutrition, six, ICU care, seven, uh, gender definition. Uh, there are cases of omphalopagus conjoined twins share genitalia, and so they talk about the importance of not simply defining gender based on external genitalia. And uh, I echo much of what these authors uh, say. I think they raise some really important uh, points. Uh, I think most importantly is the notion of preoperative planning as well as imaging. One of the things I didn't see in their article, uh, and they only briefly mention, is some of the new technology in 3D printing. For all of our cases, we have 3D prints of not just the soft tissue, but the skull and the brain parenchyma, which were essential for our uh, surgical separations. And what that allowed us to do were two things. One, the ability to study those models and examine those models preoperatively, when something like physical exam can be very difficult on, on patients who are conjoined. And the second part was being able to virtually plan those operations on the computer. So we went as far as to not just plan the separation of brain parenchyma, but also all the flap planning, all the craniotomy sites, the sites of tissue expander placement um, were all planned virtually. How much expansion would we obtain? What kind of surface area would we uh, gain? And would they adequately be away from the incisions or placed in areas of solid bone foundation so that the expansion push the skull out, or rather the scalp out, rather than push the skull in. So preoperative planning uh, and imaging modalities are essential. The other thing they, meant, they mentioned is secondary healing, which we often uh, think about in terms of a failure. In the case of conjoined twin separation, particularly with craniopagus, the expectation that the flaps are so large that we expect some edge or necrosis of that tissue because we're asking so much of that vasculature. And so for us, secondary healing was part of actually the planning. We knew we would lose or plan to lose some of the distal flaps. And so in doing that, much of the pericranium uh, and soft tissue over the, the calvarium was left intact in certain areas where we knew we might fall short. We preserved those and did not make craniotomies there. And so we'd, we'd considered some of that secondary healing and some of the initial planning of that surgery. So. I certainly agree that secondary healing is an important part. It's an expectation with much of these kinds of surgery and they should be incorporated into your plan. And then the last thing is uh, ICU care and optimization of nutrition. You know, surgical success is only part of the equation. Optimization of patients in this scenario and certainly supportive care are essential in the perioperative period. So there, it's important that if these patients and these cases are undertaken, that they're done so in a hospital setting uh, that has the appropriate um, support. So I want to thank the authors. I think they have some of the largest experience in the world with uh, conjoined twin separation. I think they really do a wonderful job in highlighting some of the key aspects of not just those particular cases, but things to consider in really all types of complex plastic surgery and reconstruction. And um, I thank, the, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share my thoughts. <music>